Welcome to Keeping It Clean, How to Properly Use Clean Rooms, provided by NASA Langley Research Center. Clean rooms are one of the most valuable tools in limiting contamination of sensitive hardware, such as optics, science instruments, and spacecraft. In this video, you'll learn about clean rooms, how to enter and exit a clean room properly, and correct procedures for operating in a clean room to ensure minimal contamination. Introduction to Clean Rooms What is a clean room? A clean room is a room in which the quantity and size of airborne particles are controlled in order to limit contamination. A clean room is also constructed and operated in a manner to control the introduction, generation, and retention of contaminants inside the space. Filtered air flows into the room through high-efficiency particulate air, or HEPA, filters. Clean rooms are classified based on the amount of allowed airborne particles in the room at any given time. The fewer particles allowed, the more precautions that must be taken in order to prevent contamination. There are two different types of clean rooms. Hard wall clean rooms have sturdily constructed rigid walls. Soft wall clean rooms have flexible walls, such as plastic sheets or strips. Hard wall clean rooms are typically cleaner than soft wall, but the processes to avoid contamination are similar in both. Clean rooms can also be classified by the direction of the airflow. Some clean rooms have horizontal airflow, in which the filtered air enters at one wall and exits through an opposite wall. Vertical flow clean rooms provide filtered air from the ceiling, and the air flows downwards towards the floor. Clean rooms are classified under the ISO standard 14644. The classifications are based upon the amount and size of airborne particles in a clean room at any given time. The ISO standard covers nine classes of clean rooms, with class 1 being the cleanest and class 9 being the least clean. This video primarily covers ISO class 7 and ISO class 5 clean rooms, as these are some of the most common classes of clean rooms used. ISO 5 clean rooms are much cleaner than ISO 7 clean rooms, and hence, more precautions must be taken to limit contamination. Preparing for work in the clean room. A clean room is not an office or a general lab area. Certain items that are perfectly fine in other areas are prohibited in clean rooms. We have to properly prepare before gowning up and entering the clean area. First, remove any cardboard, paper, or other fibrous outer packaging from items. Paper and cardboard excessively shed particles, and fibers are prohibited in clean rooms. Only clean room notebooks and clean room paper may be used in the clean room. If regular paper must be used, it should be sealed in plastic sheet protectors or plastic bags. Only ballpoint pens without caps should be used in the clean room. Graphite pencils create particles. Next, dispose of any prohibited items, such as paper, trash, etc. Food and drink are also prohibited in clean rooms. If you don't know whether or not an item is prohibited, consult the contamination control engineer or the manager in charge of your clean room. Next. Wipe down the outer surfaces of any tools and hardware that you plan on bringing into the clean room. This will reduce the amount of particles you introduce to the room. If you are carrying the items in a container, such as a tote, the outer surfaces of the tote must also be wiped down. Use the wipes and solvents provided for your clean room area. Wipes may be pre-moistened, or dry wipes with solvents such as isopropyl alcohol may be used. Once a wipe becomes visibly dirty, discard it in the required container and use a new wipe. If shoe cleaners are provided, then use them as demonstrated. Put booties on your feet to prevent tracking in particles. As you enter the clean room, take care to step on the adhesive sticky mat, which further prevents particulate contamination. If the adhesive sticky mat is dirty, remove the dirty layer to expose a clean layer before entering the room. Clean Room Gowning, ISO Class 7 or 8. We are now ready to gown up for the clean room. First, we will go over the gowning typically used for an ISO Class 7 or 8 clean room environment. However, your specific environment may require more stringent controls. Always check with your contamination control engineer or manager. After entering the gowning room, clean room users should always gown up in a top-down manner, starting at the head. First. Place the bouffant cap over your hair and ears. Make sure the cap covers all of your hair. People with long hair should tie their hair back before putting on a bouffant cap. Next, put on a face mask, completely covering your nose and mouth. This limits particles being introduced to the environment or hardware from our breathing. Next, obtain a smock. 
which will usually be provided in a clean, sealed bag. Cut open the bag with scissors and throw the bag in the trash. Unzip the smock and put the smock on one sleeve at a time, taking care to make sure the smock does not touch the ground or other surfaces. Zip the smock all the way up and secure any snaps at the neck. Be sure to choose a smock size that fits comfortably, not too big and not too small. Finally, obtain clean gloves. The specific type of glove approved for your area depends on the hardware and operations you will be performing. Always handle gloves by the gauntlet and do not touch the finger and palm portion of the glove. Pull the gloves on and make sure the gauntlet of the glove covers the wrist of your smock. Some areas require additional control and require taping the glove gauntlet to the smock with approved tape. Again, check with your contamination control engineer or manager for this requirement. Check yourself in the mirror to ensure you are dressed properly for the clean room. If entering the clean room with someone else, use the buddy system and check each other to make sure you are both properly dressed. You are now prepared to enter the clean room. Clean room gowning, ISO class 5 or 6. Gowning for an ISO class 5 or 6 clean room is slightly different than gowning up for an ISO class 7 or 8 clean room. Instead of a smock, a full set of coveralls, or bunny suit, must be worn. However, the same principle as before follows, and the gowning process should go from the top down, starting at the head. First, place the bouffant cap over your hair and ears. Make sure the cap covers all of your hair. People with long hair should tie their hair back before putting on the bouffant cap. Next, put on a face mask, completely covering your nose and mouth. The next steps are different for gowning up for an ISO class 5 or 6 clean room compared to an ISO class 7 or 8 clean room. Obtain a clean hood and open any bagging with scissors. Throw the old bag away. Place the hood over the head on top of the bouffant cap and face mask. Adjust the cover using the buttons in the back if it does not fit properly. Be sure to choose a hood size that fits comfortably. Obtain a set of clean room coveralls, or bunny suit. Gather up the coveralls and sit on the dirty side of the bench. It is absolutely important that the coveralls do not drag on the floor while dressing. Carefully step into one leg of the coveralls and then the other leg. Stand up and put your arms in the sleeves, again making sure the sleeves do not touch the ground. Zip the zipper all the way up and secure any snaps at the neck. Tuck the bottom of the hood into the top of the coveralls. Make sure you have chosen a comfortable size and the coveralls are not too big or small. Choose the correct size clean room boots. Boots that are too large can cause a trip hazard. Carefully step into the boot. The disposable booty will remain on your shoes and will be worn inside the clean room boot. The leg of the boot is worn over the coveralls. Secure any snaps and tighten all straps for a proper fit. Then swing one leg over to the clean side and then the next, then stand up. Follow the same procedure for putting on clean room gloves, making sure to handle them by the gauntlet and avoid touching the fingers and palm region. The gauntlet of the glove will cover the cuff of the coveralls. Tape gloves as necessary for the requirements of your area. Finally, check yourself in the mirror and check your buddy if you have one. You are now prepared to enter the clean room. Working in the clean room. When entering the clean room, there might be another adhesive sticky mat in front of the door. Be sure to step on it before entering. When in the clean room, practice slow and methodical movements so as to minimize the amount of particles you release in the air by moving. Moving around quickly can introduce nearly 50 times as many particles as moving slowly. Be sure to check your gloves regularly for any rips, tears, or contamination. If your gloves are damaged or contaminated, exit the clean room and change out of your gloves in the gowning room. Your skin can introduce large quantities of contamination, so properly covering your hands is essential for protecting the hardware. If you have to sneeze or cough, be sure to do it facing away from the equipment. Do not cough or sneeze onto your gloves. Prohibited Actions While in the clean room, a number of behaviors are prohibited as they introduce unnecessary contamination. Smoking is absolutely prohibited in the clean rooms as it introduces a vast number of unnecessary particles into a clean room. 
Applying makeup in the clean room is also prohibited, as makeup is a huge source of contamination. Touching one's face with gloved hands introduces skin and oil to gloves, which then gets transferred to hardware and other surfaces. Removing gloves, face masks, or any clean room garments is prohibited in the clean room and should only be removed in the gowning room. And absolutely do not open your smock or coveralls to pull items out of your pockets, such as cell phones. Eating, drinking, and chewing gum or tobacco are not allowed in the clean room. Do not enter the clean room wearing street clothes. Only proper clean room garments may be worn in the clean room. Do not wear clean room garments outside of the clean room and then return to the clean room. This is especially true for soft wall clean rooms. Exiting the clean room. When finished in the clean room, your next step should be to degown in the gowning room. The degowning process goes in reverse order as the gowning process from bottom to top. Here is the degowning process for an ISO 7 or 8 clean room. Take off your gloves and dispose of them in the proper receptacle. Remove your smock. If you are only leaving the clean room for a short period of time, you can hang your smock in the cabinet. If not, place your smock in the hamper so that it may be washed and reused. Remove the face mask and bouffant cap and dispose of them as well. Finally, exit the clean room, take off your booties and throw them away. The process is similar for an ISO class 5 or 6 clean room. Once again, take off everything in the reverse order. Remove gloves and place them in the trash. Remove each clean room boot. Unzip the coveralls, remove the sleeves from your arms and sit on the clean room bench. Remove the hood. Hoods, coveralls, and boots may be hung up in the cabinet for a short period of time, if you will be returning to the clean room later that day. Otherwise, place the garments in the laundry hamper. Remove the bouffant cap and face mask and dispose of them in the trash. Exit the gowning room and throw the booties away. Special Topics Depending on the project and clean room, special equipment and procedures may be required. If you are required to wear an electrostatic discharge, or ESD, wrist strap, the ESD strap must be worn on your wrist under both the garment sleeve cuff and the glove gauntlet. If your project requires safety glasses, be sure to put these on over top of your face mask and bouffant cap, and under your head cover. If your clean room has an air shower, be sure to use it prior to entering the clean room. This shower blows pressurized air over the garments as a final cleaning method to remove particles before one enters the clean room. Only one person at a time may use the air shower. To review, practicing proper clean room procedures is integral to maintain a clean room environment. It helps ensure the safety and success of a given project. When entering a clean room, you should dress up from the top down. While in the clean room, be sure to move slowly and deliberately, and check your gloves regularly. When exiting the clean room, degown in the reverse order. This concludes Keeping It Clean, How to Properly Use Clean Rooms. Thank you for watching, and for following proper clean room procedures to keep our sensitive science instruments and spacecraft clean.